I remember when I was a kid um, in primary school, preschool we call it here in Australia, I'm not sure if it's the same in the US, and then I think maybe the first few grades of school, I, I was really intelligent. Um, I just remember, you know, being the first to be able to read and, and getting sent to the principal's office to, um, because, because I, uh, succeeded in these ways that, that other people didn't and, um, you know, getting, get lollies off the principal and stuff like that. But anyway, I'm not saying this to, to make you think positively of me. I'm just saying this to make a point, which is. I remember kind of naturally being able to grasp concepts very quickly. But then as I grew older, slightly, maybe maybe in the next couple of years, maybe grade four and five when I was about nine or ten, I remember things getting a little bit more difficult for me. Which naturally, of course, that's the nature of school, is that each year gets more and more difficult. And a lot of people said I was smart, I'm so gifted, or I was so smart that I have a gift, and, and things like that. And then as, because of this belief that there is this, that I had this gift or this nature, and as soon as something became challenging for me, I kind of just gave up, especially when it came to more um, school-related subjects like you know, maths and science and all that stuff. When it didn't come easy, I just gave up. And it was because, obviously, there's multiple reasons, but I can see the main reason being that people told me I was gifted and I believed it. So as soon as something was difficult, I thought, oh, you know, I mustn't be gifted in that. So I would let it go. So I had this very solid state sense of self that, I magically had this gift and that this gift makes everything easy and I don't need to work for it. And if I need to work for something, it means I shouldn't do it. And yeah, and I think hadn't I formed this magical self-concept, I would have been a lot more successful in, in a lot of the, the basic school subjects that I had. I more went in line with music and certain sports later on and stuff like that but I just think I would have done a lot better in general because I was pretty intelligent I just as soon as things got difficult I, I didn't think I should have had to work for it so I didn't so this the reason I'm telling you this is just, it's an example of how this belief in this magical thing that causes you to be a certain way can ruin your life the biggest example of this is the idea of being an addict or the idea of having an addiction. It's almost like there's this substance or this idea or this dream called addiction or, or thing called a drug that magically makes you take it. That there's this personality type that, um, this magic personality type that just causes you to have to do these drugs and you have no choice in the matter. It was the same thing with my idea of being gifted in intellectually or whatever. It's not true. It's all choice. We choose to see ourselves a certain way. We choose to use every single drug, every single addictive activity that we do. We choose every one of them. I chose to not work because of ideas I had work hard on learning because of ideas I had and, and in some way was influenced to, to, to have um, about myself. There is no gifted. There is no addictive personality. There is no addictive drug. There is just choices and in each moment we make a choice based on our concept of reality and based on our want to be happy. We will always choose the thing that's going to make us happiest, whether it's in the moment, whether it's in the future, whatever. 
I chose to not work hard at school at certain things because that was the better choice because I knew I had this gift and I just wanted to rely on the gift and I didn't want to have to work hard. That was the happier option for me. Same thing with all every single time you use a drug, you think the drug is going to bring you more happiness than whatever else you could be doing. Working, making money, creating something, exercising, working on relationships, doing something you fear, whatever it is, you're choosing to do the drug. If you go out to a party, you drink, you're choosing to drink because you believe it's a better option than experiencing whatever anxieties you experience. Or maybe you don't like the feeling of not being the one who drinks or whatever it is. You, you choose drinking even though it has negative side effects. You're aware of them. You're not ignorant of them. You choose drinking because it's the happier option in the moment or it's more of an investment in the future, whatever it is. This magical thinking ruins lives. Again, you're not gifted. You don't have an addictive personality. You simply just have preferences and ideas. <coughs> Excuse me. And these preferences and ideas are just constantly being um, seen. You just see what your preferences are and you choose this or that. The way we fix this is just seeing reality for what it is. If you want to have a different choice, then you need to find, you need to change your ideas about what makes you happy and go for that. If you want to work harder at school, if you want to study harder, then you need to understand that you need to look at, look at the material and realize that you need to work hard at this and this is what's going to make you happy. This idea of being, having a flowing type of self-image. If, if another person can do it, so can you. And the reason you're not doing it is because you're just choosing, choosing the option that you think is going to make you happiest. Magic is when you believe outside forces make choices for you. But nothing makes choices except for you. You have your beliefs... You have your ideas about the world, you have your preferences and you make a choice. If you see yourself as unlimited, then the choices can change. But in seeing yourself as being influenced by magic, by some magic substance or idea that forces you to choose a certain way, you create a limit, you create a block in the way you think and the way you are. To remove this, you need to see happiness elsewhere. It's a positive process. You're not running away from what's negative. You're choosing what's going to make you happiest. That may be to continue doing what you're doing, and that's fine. For me, it wasn't. I needed to start to see myself as not gifted, and I needed to start to see myself as able to learn, and that this painful process of learning because learning can always, always has an element of discomfort to it is happiness for me this is where I find happiness challenging myself changing my ideas learning difficult things that feel impossible that is where I find my happiness I'm not going to find my happiness by not doing those things and relying on my magical uh, my magical gifted personality trait so I hope that clarifies things in my life. This idea of magic influencing me from outside has ruined parts of my life in a sense, but I see it very clearly now. You can see where it influences. You know, I remember when I was younger, I would look at things and think that I don't like them. But I just didn't like, I just was not willing to put in the effort because I didn't see a point because I had that idea of being gifted. So be careful of this. Really look at your life and see where you believe you're being influenced magically. 
Maybe your partner makes you angry. Or maybe you hate you, your job does things that, that make you hate it. But it's all you. You're choosing these things because it's the happiest choice in the moment or that it's the, the choice that you see happiest for your future. Rearrange these things. Find happier choices in other things and everything else will fall away easily. Thanks, guys.